chipping. Let's get to it. We all want to be able to have good touch around the greens and sometimes we need to chip the ball high behind the bunker. We can't go low, that chip and run, so we've got to get it up. Please help me, Tom, with your tips on how I can do this. Okay, no problem at all. So there's a certain element of feel that's needed to play these shots and that just comes from practice and experience. Visualization plays a role. I think it's super important for the player to be standing behind the ball, visualizing the shot and its flight, how it looks, how it feels, where it's landing and how it's rolling out to the hole. Those are the first things I would suggest. Okay. Okay, but from a technical standpoint, something that I find I see people struggling with all the time is that they get the ball position too far back in their stance and the grip stays too far ahead of the ball. Right. And what happens then is we come into strike, our center point is four inches in front of that ball. So the golf club wants to connect here, but it's connecting too early. The club then digs, and most of the time we'll duff the ball. Your landing zone becomes this small. And then as we dig, we then try and hit that ball again. I've seen that a lot in golf lessons. The double hit. The double hit, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So straight away, I would suggest that you get the ball forward in your stance, okay. okay? Not quite as far as you would have a driver, but somewhere in between the center and the front. All right. Now, it's so important that that happens because then the golf club can be bruising the turf rather than the leading edge digging yes. into the fairway. Mm. And, that, and that's the cardinal sin because you lose all of the fluidity of the club head. Of course. Okay, so what I would like you to do here is just get yourself set up to the side of the ball here. We're gonna have a, a couple of practice swings, okay? okay. Now. What I'd like to see is that you take your left hand off of the club mm -hmm. and start to just have right hand only swings here. And what you can feel there is that the golf club is going to bounce and bruise the turf as you go. Yeah. Perfect. It's almost feeling to me a little bit like a miniature version of the pitches. Absolutely right. And you absolutely right. And you, obviously your arms and body are going to work together. We're going to keep the club head throwing and moving through impact because we want to keep the club moving because the ball can then run up the grooves and we can generate spin. That's what we if want. If we generate spin, we create more control. Absolutely. And that's perfect. So once we've got the visual element and we discuss that we don't want to hit the ball in the bunker, we can <laughs> redirect to focus on exactly what it is we're trying to do. Yes. So that's your preparation. Your right-handed swings become your, your feels, your rehearsals. Uh -huh. Perfect. And then when you're ready, just square yourself up into your target here and just let that golf club move. Beautiful. And what I like there, Iona, is that your hands were really soft. Yeah. And something we didn't talk about at setup was grip pressure. Of course. You want to hold that club really softly, almost like you're holding a bird. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to give the death grip. That creates tension in your forearm and your shoulder, and it's very difficult then to let the club head release and move. So yeah. nice soft hands with those chip shots. Okay, Iona, so just set yourself up now, as we discussed, so the ball's gonna be slightly forward of center, your grip pressure is very soft, and you're gonna let the club bruise and flow through impact now. Lovely shot there, Iona. You can see the ball had a nice high flight, lots of spin, the club head got underneath the ball, the ball then ran up all of the grooves in the face, generating spin, which of course is gonna give you more control and ultimately much better chip shots around the green. That's what we're looking for. Tom, thank you for those tips. Hopefully can help you at home. You only need a spot of grass to practice your chipping, which is the good thing. So I really hope these help you to become a more confident chipper.